Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Super Deluxe Gamescast. It is Thursday, April 25th. Happy birthday, buddy, to my son, uh, who is now 16 years old. Um, that's unbelievable. That's really that's fucked. scary. That's scary. That's really <laughs> fucked. You're going to teach your kid to um, drive. Yeah, he can already drive. That's fucked. I, I wouldn't have admitted that, but... <laughs> It's really, it's really fucked up. I'm not happy about it. Um, I've enjoyed watching him get older, but I also, with it comes uh, a whole load of uh, of stressors. So, uh, yeah, that is something that uh, that that is something that that I am not cool with. On the on the bright side of things, Derek, did I tell you I actually, uh, you know, given my past as a bartender, I have con- crafted a new drink. I have concocted a new drink. You've come up with a new recipe. I've come up. I've 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 come up with a new recipe. Like I call this. So this is three ounces of hibiki whiskey. Okay. Uh, some uh, natural cherry juice. Mm-hmm. Two maraschino cherries uh, and cane sugar. I call it a, cher- a Japanese cherry blossom. Okay. I thought you were gonna say cane sauce, and I was like, "Oof, that <laughs> yeah. that that's a weird choice." An appetizing. I, got, <laughs> I got no, no, no. If I'm putting barbecue sauce. In my uh, if I'm if I'm putting barbecue sauce in my drinks, it's always that we're talking serious bone sucking sauce. <laughs> like, we we talk only... about bone sucking, huh? I didn't know it was that kind of podcast. That's not the are kind you, of bone sucking. Are you guys are you guys not aware of that brand? I'm aware. I know the joke <laughs> I'm making now. <laughs> Brittany, Britt, there's a brand of barbecue sauce called we're, we're talking serious bone sucking sauce. That's the name of my porno. <laughs> Up, Brittany. Jesus Christ. We've got a real like Sephiroth thing going on with like the two blonde highlights on each side of the face. Like it's it it, it it's I've remarkable. had it since yeah. the charity stream. I know, but for some reason it's like really standing out to me right now. I don't understand it's why. Probably because my roots are fucking five inches out. Probably Grant and Chad is like gone. <laughs> <Grant. laughs> you gotta you gotta get that. You got to get some of that bone sucking sauce in your life. Oh my god! Um, Usually the sauce comes after you've sucked on the. B- Never mind. The <laughs> the bone Welcome sauce. to a gaming podcast. No, this is now this is now a bone sucking podcast. That's what that's what this is now. Um, Britt, you do look lovely, and and you do look like Rogue. Um, you you got like a serious. You, you do actually, yeah. You you've people in chat are saying that you're giving off a Rogue vibe, and you absolutely are. is. Derek, what are you? Are I'm you just trying pointing to out the white sh- stripe that I have in my hair? That's a little less visible right now because how greasy my hair is. But yeah, what's up with your greasy hair, dude? What I don't have that? a shower in my house, John, and I haven't for a month. That's true. Oh, uh, dry <laughs> shampoo. Yeah, Josh it's is, uh, the buildup's horrible. Oh, people, great. Um, it really is. Love you, Josh. Hi, guys. John, uh, is that is that 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 beanie looks so familiar to me? It is. I didn't even yeah. realize. I've never been on a podcast with this beanie. I was introduced to John in this be- beanie. It's iconic, and I've never been it around you to it. It's it reclaimed control. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. It, jo- Assuming direct. Man, no, Matt Piscatella brought up steak fries in The Witcher 3 on a single podcast, and John had to dig out the guns and beanie. <laughs> The man you knew as John is asleep now. Let's say I've assumed direct control. Um, no, I was digging through. Uh, I was digging through some boxes, and I found this, and I was like, you know what? It's fucking time. I'm bringing it back. We have to go back. Like, I'm. We we have to go back. This is the beanie that that launched a meme. Um, it, <laughs> it's the beanie that Red bought in war just to impersonate you. <laughs> It's the beanie I started talking to a random guy at PAX thinking it was Jaw. (laughs) You just saw another tall white man in a Gungeon beanie and you were like, that's him? Yeah, that that was actually the exact line of thought I had. And I was wrong. (laughs) All right, guys, we got a fucking, we got a fun podcast. And we're not going to talk about anything depressing. Um, This is going to be a fun one. This is going to be a good one. It's, It's good news. It's funny vibes and ideas. Um, next week we're gonna have the tough podcast. Yeah, but this week it's all stupid. I don't have a drink. I made a huge mistake. What the fuck? Did I'm you gonna do? have to let y'all start while I go. Oh no! Pour some whatever whiskey. will you do? I'll go pour some whiskey. Clearly. All right. Oh, I fuck guess off. We'll talk about, I guess we'll talk about what we've been playing uh, while Derek's gone. Uh, and you know what? I'll start. Um, so uh, I finished the Rising Tide DLC. Fucking loved it. 
Um, loved everything about it. Uh, I don't know why the ton berries are so caked the fuck up, but those ton berries got some ass cheeks going on. Uh, they got some I, I cake. Like- I I told Derek. I I said, is that why they carry knives around all the time for all that fucking cake? <laughs> People are getting weirdly sexual about the Tom berries in sixteen. Oh, I'm not surprised. Final Fantasy fans are the worst. They they really are, and I'm one of them. Um, and I'm nowhere near as horny as some of you fuckers. Like, you people are weird. Uh, but I finished I finished the Rising Tide DLC. Um. Lo- the Leviathan diet fight is fucking hard. Um, it is. It I, I also mo- played the DLC. That that DPS check bullshit shield took me forever it, to get it's past. Rough. It's rough. It's rough. Um, but overall, I I really like. I think it's a great way to. How kind did of cap I miss off. the Tonberry discussion? God damn it! <laughs> why, Derek? What's why? Why do you want to fuck a Tonberry? Is that what you're saying? Do you want to? Are you? Oh, I you, spank you, you, its little booty. I don't like that. How do you not want to give um, it a little, little, little jiggle jiggle spank? Come on. That's that's why those things have an attack called everyone's grudge. Because <laughs> spank them. Um, but no, I finished the rising. I finished rising tide. It was great. The Leviathan fight was really hard. That DPS check was rough. Justin, you're absolutely right. There's a DPS. Check. It took me like 45 minutes to get past that one DPS check. It was, it was rough. Um, but it was a great way to cap off the story of, uh, of 16. I thought, um, they did not change. I'll go and tell you, they did not change the ending of the game. Like gaining the last dominance powers does nothing to change the end of the game. And I like that. I'm glad they didn't change the ending. I thought I thought Final Fantasy 16 ended exactly the way it needed to. So I'm glad they didn't go back and 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 try to change the ending at all. Um, I'm also now that I got that out of the way, I am replaying Dissidia Duodecim Zero True. Ooh, wonderful um, choice. Fucking. Up there with Theat Rhythm Final Bar Line as one of the best Final Fantasy spin-offs. In fact, I think I think there's a strong argument to be made that Dissidia Zero or Zero One or Zero Twelve uh is the best Final Fantasy spin-off. It's a shame they never made a third Dissidia game. Yeah, we don't talk about NT in this house. We don't we, we don't do that. I, I would love just a fucking remaster of, of uh uh Zero Twelve. It's it's a game that more people excuse me deserve to play. Uh, just a, uh, just like a, just a goofy fucking. What if we put all the Final Fantasy characters in one, in one game, uh, just beat them up? I fucking love it. I love everything about Dissidia. Um, but that's what I've been playing right now. Uh, I, I put. Who do you play? Con- What's that? Who do you play oh, as? I play as Terra, Kefka, and Cecil. Uh, and also I'll tell you what Laguna because Laguna is fucking overpowered in Laguna Dissidia. is busted. He's a monster he's a broken in he should have got his own series laguna's Laguna? yeah. agree yeah what a he's wonderful good. dipshit good. i love him mm-hmm. so also i just i like i love that decidia is reminding me that lagoon is just a fucking himbo like he's hitting on the cloud of darkness he's like oh, yeah oh hey uh you know wow uh, who are you it's, <laughs> it's a little like weird cloud- storyline that squall's now love was almost his sister but it's fine it's you know what i'm not gonna judge but that's what I've been playing. People will fuck t- Tom Berries. What's what's a little incest? Who has actually fucked a Tom Berry? Nobody's. I don't. I refuse to believe anyone's <laughs> actually fucked a Tom Berry. Derek. <laughs> Derek, did you fuck no. a little green fish man? I have clearly never fucked a Tom Berry. Are Tom Berries amphibians? <clears throat> I don't Do have, have an answer for you, man. Um, how do they procreate? I've never seen of I've never seen a female Tonberry. Do they just like? How do you know? Do they lay eggs and fertile? Like I don't know. Like I guess budding. I think They're honestly, the further down this lane of discussion we go, the worse it gets. Bud, um, <laughs> doggy style. Tonberries are, Tom are probably fucking hung, aren't they? Why? All right. Well, you always just take it like you can't a make fun bit. of me. You can't. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I want to spank the little jiggly booty, and now you're like, I bet they've they I bet they've got. I bet huge, they got some dick. I bet their hog is fat. <laughs> I bet every one of them is the fucking girth master. <laughs> oh, That's the thing let's that I move about. to a different human being now. <laughs> other than the girth master? Yes, and other than you. Um. I'll go. Uh, I'll talk about what I've been playing. Oh, great. Brit's Googling. 
Oh no! Wait, you don't know what Blitz Master? <laughs> Blit does not it's know not what, what you think. It's not what you think. Brit, Brit, <laughs> Brit, we caught that happened. facial expression live, girl. <laughs> I, t- I was trying to figure out. I kept thinking that their move was final sting, okay. and I was like, no, that's the B move. So I looked. No, and it's no, it's I want chef's Brit knife. Yeah. To look up no, 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 no. I'll tell you what I've been playing. Um, I have been playing uh that Tales of Kanzara Zao. Oh, oh yeah, I bought right. that. I just haven't, I haven't played it yet. Um, you know what? I have not. It has been an insane week for me at work, so I have not had a lot of time to play games. But um, I've put a few hours into it so far. I am very into it. It's. It's a Metroidvania, right? It's a pretty yeah. good, so far, again, only a couple hours in, it's a pretty good Metroidvania. If you want to talk purely gameplay-wise, yeah. like, it's got a decent little combat system. It feels like it's going to open up more as I get more, like, abilities. Um, but I think what makes it special to me is yeah. he's he just letting us know his opinions. Um, you don't get one after today. <laughs> Um, I like a. I'm I'm in love with the aesthetic, the art style, the art design, the character design, the world design, all of that. Um, you know, again, have more like um fiction like created by people of African descent and like clearly inspired by like Africa. Um, because there's so little of that. Uh, in the like in Europe and in in the United States. Uh, and I think that that's like so refreshing when something so beautiful like that comes along. Um, I'm prepared to have my heart torn out by this story that is about like grappling with the grief that comes with the loss of a parent. Um, obviously that hits me very hard considering I lost my mom, uh, about six months ago. Um, seven now, I guess, but, um, what's time. Yeah, I know. Right. Um, so it's, it's a story that I'm very prepared to go into and very like open, open mind and open heart, like ready to engage with, uh, in, in, in a truly devastating way. Um, so, you know, I don't know how much it, I just need to get further into the game. I don't know. Um, if you're just a purely gameplay sicko, how much this game will appeal to you. Most of what I've read in terms of people who have played it, people who have reviewed it, say it's a pretty good game in its own right. But I mean, where it shines is the story, where it shines is the characterization um, and like the art direction, aesthetic, the music, things like that. Um, so oh, there goes John. Um, I'm not going anywhere, Derek. I'm just turning the camera off. For a second. Try to fix it. That's all. Cool. I'm here. But um, but yeah, that's what I've been playing. Is just that Tales of Kinzara Zao. Um, Finn was talking to um the studio head uh about having them on the show, and I I would love that. Um, I also think it's it's important to it's I think it's important to mention that this game was con- was created as a tribute and kind of a memento to his father. Yeah, yeah, because he lost his father. Uh, that's yeah. that's what inspired you know um the the choice to to use that as the story and the idea of like what is it that what is it that our parents leave behind for us, you know, our loved ones leave behind for us when we lose right. them. Um, and how do we kind of honor their memories? Um, while also I feel like the way the story is setting up is also to try to remind us not, not to let that loss um, make us or fool us into overlooking the people who are still here with us. And who are grieving alongside us. Um, Ooh, that's that's tough. We will see. Um, because it feels, again, only a couple hours in, I can already see where they're setting up to talk about, like, the fact that the mother is being overlooked in the way that she is also grieving. And that, like, the son is not noticing, like, the pain that's happening to the rest of the family. Um, and I, I, I hope that's what I'm seeing, because I think that's a very under... under uh, acknowledged part of losing a very close family member is how hard it, how easy it can be to get lost in your own grief um, and kind of let your, the bubble that is your world shrink in to encompass only you. 
Um, and you need to not only like allow other people to reach out to you and lift you up, like you need to recognize how your siblings, your surviving parents, et cetera, um, are, are also grieving and need you. So yeah. That's it's really a really, uh, it's, it's a good topic that I, th- I don't think a lot of games represent. Yeah. Um, and it like really kind of makes you think that like, huh, wow. Like, you know, there's grief in so many ways. Mm-hmm. Um, because, you know, the people around you are grieving the person that you used to be before, you know, the devastation happened. That's true. Um, wow. Yeah. So it's like grief is just, it is not linear. Yeah. Um, I thought we were going to have a happy, cheerful podcast. You know, sometimes part of recognizing the beauty in life is taking a little bit of the bitter along with the sweet, right? And, and appreciating the wholeness that is our life experience. Right. Especially, especially kitty. right now. Kitty! kitty. <laughs> <laughs> Zeke always brings a big old, big old goofball grin to my face. So, Britt, what you been playing recently? Um, I went, I flew a little too close to the sun with a uh, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Um, I am at the very end of the game and I just can't muster up the energy to finish it because it's just, it's, it's too much. Um, and what I mean by too much is I loved it. I loved the open world. It was so fun and you got so much extra dialogue and, you know, the combat in Final Fantasy VII Remake is just so fun anyway. Um, and I was doing clearing every single area before I moved on. And then like by, by chapter 10, 11, 12, you know, what? When, when I reached Gungaga, I was like, yeah, I'm a little, I'm a little past this. A I'm a little burnt out. I'm a little done. And then on top Long of that, game. oh, Tifa was my date. Of course, Tifa was my date. Um, but it, um, it's a very long game. It's a great game. I just feel like it's super bloated between all the open it, world shit and the mini games. It's, it, it, it's yeah. like impossible to talk about that game. Like, especially. I don't know if it's going to be more or less of an issue for people that aren't familiar with the original one, but like it's literally a hundred hours of filler. Yeah, easily. Like, it, it, it's like, yeah, there's absolutely. No, there is no narrative push at all until the very end. Like there's some great characterization stuff that they've added. They've added a lot of stuff that's very entertaining, but like it was already a part of like, they made a hundred hour game out of like, a four to six a, a 25, hour 25 25 hour game like a four to six hours. hour segment of a shorter game where not much story stuff happens and, um, it's, like, and it's not like some of them are really good like obviously i'm a big fan of queen's blood um but i think like mini games like that are okay to add in um just because like it introduced new characters and it's a different different take on something similar to Triple Triad, which has worked out in the past, obviously, with like Final Fantasy VIII, Final Fantasy IX. Um but there's like I don't need a fucking mini game to go pick mushrooms. I don't need that. You yes, know, you do. I don't I I don't want to do mini games to progress the like my story. And it's just like <laughs> Like at first it was cute and fun, and then it was just like, oh my god, there's another mini game. Uh-huh. I have to do another mini game <laughs> to do this quest. Um, I'm making it sound like a terrible game. It's not. It's really fun. No, um, I, I, I'm in. I'm in a very similar boat. I think the game itself is very, very good, but like, it's loaded. As as well, and also loaded. like, yeah, and also I'm some like. I'm a huge fan of the original Final Fantasy VII. However, this stretch of the game is probably my least favorite part of the original Final Fantasy VII. And now it's 100 hours long. Um, they, they did so, some really good things with the story. Like, I there love is, Barrett, there is Barrett's some, arc. Yeah, the, um, the stuff they added with Barrett was fantastic. Like, I love the time that we spend with these characters. But, like, if it had just been a bit more streamlined and a bit tighter, it could have been, like nothing would have overstayed its welcome and it could have felt like this really fun adventure 
but it just is so there's just way too much of it yeah um and and it's a shame because like again i liked a lot of that stuff but like i almost just kind of wish there was just a bit more focus to it on well, like kind of yeah. like justin said right like i mean the <sighs> The problem with the narrative of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is that, you know, it's not it's not just that, you know, Justin's right. There's no narrative push, right? But also, if you're someone like me who just, like, has to do everything before yeah. you leave that area. Mm-hmm. That's like, me. Like, yeah, no, that's me. And, and, and here's the thing. It destroys the pacing. Destroys yeah, I, it. I, like, I, um... I actually like I I didn't skip any like side quests or anything until some of the stuff towards the end because towards the end some of them get really hard and it's just like oh here's another combat arena here's another combat arena here's another combat arena, um, but mm-hmm. I did most of the stuff before that. The game took me ninety three hours to finish. Yeah, it's a long fucking game. It took me about ninety five hours to finish, and I'll tell you right now, I did not do everything. Yeah. Yeah, like I'm I'm like I said I'm at the end of the game and I'm not going to do everything. I'm not going to platinum that like I did remake. Like I'm just I've accepted my fate. Like I I don't have to do this just because I completed the last one. It's, um it's it's just so it's it's so weird too cuz it's like it's one of those things they were again, I really like the game. Um there's a couple moments that I thought were phenomenal and I'm not like and a couple moments that were recreations of Things from because Final Fantasy VII is the first video game I ever finished from beginning to end myself. Um, so like that game holds a very special place in my heart. Um, and like there was a couple scenes, like the planetarium scene in Cosmo Canyon, where I just Cosmo I was Canyon so, was my favorite. Yeah, yeah. that, that section was great. But Canyon. like I was so overwhelmed with just like joy and nostalgia <laughs> in the in that mo <laughs> in that moment and like. But, like, there's another section where they also tend to just, like, insert these very long sections. Like, right when I was getting excited for the moment that I knew was coming up. Like, there's one where I'm like, oh, hey, we're going to be meeting Vincent soon. And then they put in this two-hour-long oh, no. so where you bad. play as Kate Sith and throw boxes. And it yeah, is one of the worst things bad. I have it's played really in a video bad. game in years. Um, I love Kate, Kate Sith. I love the characterization of Kate Sith. I love that they made him a incredibly charming, likable character. He's not but fun that to play fucking as. mini game, that <laughs> series, he is not fun to play as. I think he can be. Um, I, I always like to mix it up. Um, but yeah, so whenever I get burnt out on games, I completely just like drop video games and I play things that I don't have to like actively engage in like i can just hop on and do what the fuck ever so i've been playing a shit ton of bellatro and i've been playing Fortnite. um and that that's all i've been playing for the last few weeks uh because i burnt myself out uh i'll go back to it um at some point but yeah i'm just i wish i could play bellatro like i i know that everybody's obsessed with that game right now i just can't i don't like card games john's not enough oh i cool love kid. card games He's not the teens. He's not. He's not in line with what the teens love. That's right. I'm here, Bellatro. Bellatro. Just because I'm going to be 44 fucking years old in August. So you ask your kid. He's probably all about Bellatro. He knows what's up. He know. He's all about the Bally Wally. <laughs> Don't ever say that. Again. <laughs> what's wrong with Bally? I think that's like the most that's, innocent that's thing fun. I've said this entire. Podcast. I love that. Is a wonderful collection of syllables. I love it. <laughs> Um. Yeah. Um. God. I. Hey, man. My decision to wait on FF Seven Rebirth feels more and more justified every day. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Because now, by the time you're done with it, the the next one will be out. So. Yeah. Well, you know, there's that. (laughs) Um. Justin, bud, what you been playing? Um. So I I did also play the DLC for um Final Fantasy Sixteen. I don't really have all that much to say about it. It was just I liked it. It was good. It was more FF16 that was kind of focused on the stuff I liked from the game and not so much the stuff I didn't like. Yeah. Um, it, it was like a pleasant, nice DLC. Um, I don't have strong feelings on it, you know, one way or the other, but it, it was good. It, if you liked FF16, I definitely think it's, it's absolutely worth going through. Question. 
Does Jill do anything in this DLC? She has some lines. She has <laughs> some lines. Uh, Damning us with faint praise. They, they, so there's a boss fight that they almost ha- give some story relevance to Jill, and then they and then they back off after like a a, a little bit of discussion. Hey, Jill lands three hits <laughs> on a on a boss. That, please, that was the most sideline. Fucking incredible comedic timing. Hey guys, <laughs> this is gonna be the DLC that makes <laughs> Jill line. really matter as a character. <laughs> they actually said that ahead of time. I'm not kidding. They actually said that they're like, oh yeah, Jill. <laughs> Jill's gonna have a much bigger role in this DLC. I knew like better. I knew better immediately that it wouldn't be true. <laughs> they did remember that she exists. In Go, the DLC. girl! Give us so, nothing. Oh, that's better. Than, that's better than some stretches hey. of the game. But um, oh my Eric, god, that was Eric, is this better for you, Eric? That's actually really good. Yes. Oh, I like that. Yeah, looks good. But uh, I, I've mostly been um, playing Destiny. Um, like uh, they, they had a actually had a big free update called into the light which is kind of just it was a content drop to kind of fill in the break because final shape the next expansion um got delayed so uh what they did is they they added a horde mode which is awesome more games but should they, have horde modes yeah i, I just it, think that's important but they but like and it works so well with you know, destiny, especially the place that destiny is now with how you build your character and loadouts and stuff. But they also brought back a lot of old weapons that have been sunset and haven't been available for a long time. And they made them really powerful. And they, they also added a limited time thing where like they're not going away and onslaught's still going to be available for everybody to play down the line. Like that's just a permanent addition to the game. But right now up until the new, um, expansion launches there's a chance that you can get like a limited edition version which like has like a special glow glow on it and and stuff and so like those are very fun to chase um but like they they also have some story stuff that some of it's very silly um there's a lot of like references to like old memes and stuff actually one of the weapons that they brought back um because it's like it's like 12 infamous weapons and one of them was not a fan favorite. It was one that everybody got mad because for some reason, when one of the expansions launched, there was something wrong with the loot pool. So everybody just kept getting this one grenade launcher over and over and over <laughs> is, and over again. Is it like again. the equivalent of like giving people the clob, bringing it back? It's like a, it, well, well, like a here's joke. the thing. Here's Only the thing. Bring the fucking Zalo back, Justin. The, the, the new one is extraordinarily powerful. Uh, so, activate it really so awesome sweet. now but like but it's it's stuff like that but there's also like just been some good stuff that like is reflecting on stuff and it's a good build up leading into the next expansion and it's also just gotten me thinking about destiny because uh for those of you that you know aren't familiar like the next expansion is the end of the story arc that they've been building for the past 10 years like this is the end of the light the guardians have um, fulfilled their destiny and then the, the game is continuing after that, but this is like the end of the arc. And I have been playing this game since since day one. Actually, I've been playing it since the first alpha. <laughs> I've been playing it since before day one. Um, and it's gotten me reflecting on the game. And like, I've never really loved or been invested in a game in the same way that I have been Destiny. I feel that way and about it's been, 14, Justin, so I understand that. Yeah, like it, it, it's and it's very similar to like the lead up for Endwalker, right? Where it was like the big end of the story arc, mm-hmm. and then more was coming afterwards. Yeah, yeah. Um, and well, there's, there's, there's ju- ju- been... Justin, if I if I could cut in real quick, there's that sense of like there's that sense of excitement as to like you know okay this chapter this like you know this chapter that I mean Destiny two came out what 2016. Um, 2016, and like also this story arc started in destiny one as well destiny one, so right? Like, yeah, yeah. traveler so like this has been going on for over a decade now um it's tw- 2014 it's like almost exactly 10 years yeah and and it's the same thing with with 14 right like we you know it's this decade-long story has ended and, and you're kind of like you know okay like going forward everything is new L- like like we're we we've entered completely uncharted territory and that's that is something that if you're that invested in a live service game or MMO is extremely fucking exciting but also extremely like like nerve-wracking it's like can we can we hit those highs again the way we used to i mean and it, and it's been bittersweet too but like also i've just been reflecting and i've been playing a lot with my clan um which has been great 
a lot of lovely people um in there uh it's run by maddie former sdgc member oh, uh maddie. so um and some of our community members are in there as well um and i've just been having a great time and realized like i don't think there's any game that i know as well as destiny like and and the thing is there's still people that know way more than me but like it's been really great to just like it, it's funny because like there's so much talk and like derision of like filler content and stuff in stories right. And, like, a lot of, like, you know, streaming shows have cut a lot of that out and kind of more focused. But, like, when you had these longer seasons of shows and stuff before, there'd be episodes that were focused on the characters or reflecting on things and stuff. And I think some of that stuff has been lost a lot. And, like, this update, I actually think, made it a better lead-up to Final Shape than it would have if the expansion had come out previously. Mm -hmm. Because there's a lot of... I mean, there's a lot of in-joke stuff. There is some funny stuff. But there's a lot of, like, good reflection... Um, from the characters and where the characters have been um, and where they're going, um, as well as just kind of, hey, here's some old stuff that you haven't seen for a while coming back. Like they're bringing back two of the exotic missions. Those are two of the things that are kind of inf have infamously been vaulted. Um, those are now back in the game. Well, one of them is back. It, the other one's coming in the next couple weeks. Um, those are now, but they're going to be permanent additions back in the game. Um, they're bringing back, so they're bringing back some old stuff people missed. They're bringing in, I, and the horde mode is something people have been requesting for years. Um, the weapons that they brought back have been great. So like, it's just been a really good like, hey, reflecting on this as well as getting me back into the game um, in the lead up to the expansion. Um, it, it, it's just been a really cool experience, and I don't think I've ever felt like this with even really any piece of media. Um, just because, like, it's been so participatory and, like, I've made so many friends along the way. Well, and, like, and, you savor that feeling because yeah. that is something that that does not come along, but I think maybe once a generation, like, right? Like, and, like, like when you find that game that just, it clicks with you so hard that it, it, it you know, you're thinking about it when you're not playing it and it becomes like a second hangout spot to you. And yeah. that is something that doesn't happen very often. And I'm glad I'm glad that that is something that you found. And, and yeah, it's just, it's just, it's just been really nice. And it's also been good because the destiny community is notoriously whiny <laughs> um, for oh, yeah. re reasons oh, yeah. that are justified and reasons that are not. And it's, it's been nice to also see some good vibes um, in the community and stuff too. Um, so it, it's just, it's just been really nice to like sink back into that game and really just kind of think about, where I've been with it. Um, so, yeah, that's been really cool. Well, has, oh, yeah. uh, has everybody gone, Derek? Yes. So we can move on to the first of our topics. Let's, um, let's, let's do our topics. Yeah. So um, Brit actually is the origin point of both Fucking of our discussion those points topics, tonight. Derek. I love it because usually I'm just like constantly scanning headlines, looking for good ideas. I throw some ideas out. Everyone basically goes, yeah, those are probably the best things for us to talk about. Occasionally somebody chimes in. This week I was blank and brit came in fucking both barrels fully loaded um so the first thing we're going to talk about um and uh brit brit is getting coffee at the moment so she'll chime in uh when she is back but uh the first thing brit brought up was an announcement that uh fortnite is adding in a setting to uh for players to basically disable what they call confrontational emotes right in other words emotes that are come across as like direct taunts you know l signs shit like that right um i'm, I'm not sure how they're going to categorize putting things into like that confrontational uh like bucket versus not um but yes i think the idea is stuff that's more obviously like aggressive insulting taunting um and just kind of the idea of talking about like how we can handle like both toxicity in online gaming, but also how we can handle dealing with varying levels of player sensitivity in online games. Um, so, so how does this actually work? Like, because they like, obviously you can't disable some other players. Like, like, like you can't stop another player from, I think it just like, makes it where you, because you turned that setting, you won't see it. I, I assume it'll get replaced with some other emote. In that you know what's funny is that is that people like shitlords online will make fun of this and say, "Oh, snowflakes can't handle getting teabagged or whatever," right? But 
but the thing is, is that some people just don't want to fucking deal with that. You know, like it's a lot of reasons, right? Like, if, like for example, if it's some fucking kid who's getting picked on in school, like he may just want to log on to Fortnite and 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 run around and play a fucking video game. He might not want to deal with that shit. I say, kid who's getting picked on at school. I work forty plus hours a week and I have a life. You know what I mean? Like, I just want to play yeah. a bit stuff. Like people being weirdos in multiplayer games is why I don't play multiplayer games. Um, it's why I will just never do voice chat uh, unless I'm specifically playing with friends. And the idea of being able to make it where, like, you can't even do, like, the more direct taunts at me. That sounds great. Just so I don't have to deal with it. Um, hey, real, real quick, Derek. I want to give a shout out to Persephiroth in chat. We got to have we gotta have. Oh, yeah. Own. Absolutely. We gotta have um, our own. But, yeah, like, the, uh, the other thing is, I mean, and I'm saying this is, like, somebody who obviously does not have to deal with even a fraction of the like bullying and aggression in an online game. Right. Um, I mean, God forbid you're a fucking woman, right. Or, or oh, just fuck. like a feminine non-binary person, whatever, um, playing online video games and somebody hears your voice or, or like clocks you and figures it out. F- fucking enjoy that. Um, you know, so like any tool people have as an option, it's just like voice chat, right? Being able to not, do voice chat being able to say you know what turn the taunt taunts off um that'd be great for me like i love that um yeah and you know like like it i think i think that more games ought to adopt this kind of stance right like this is i'll I'll be honest with you this is the first time and you guys correct me if i'm wrong but this is the first time i've heard of anything like this being implemented in a uh, in in such a in in, in any game it's the first time Uh, i've heard of this particular feature um which made it so interesting it's kind of similar to like some of like the arachnophobia uh, settings that some yeah. games had, where they they replace like the spi- spider models with something kind of more nondescript. Um, yeah. it, it's kind of the same same thought for that, but it's nice to see something like this in specifically a multiplayer game, yeah, a competitive multiplayer game. I'll be real curious to hear when when Britt gets back with her coffee. Obviously, this is a like something she brought up, but also b like she plays a lot more online multiplayer games than me, and c. I bet she has a very different experience with playing online multiplayer games than I do. Well, Um, I mean, I, I quit rainbow six siege, a game that I, I really loved. I thought that game was very unique and that is a really uniquely toxic, um, and community at times. Right. There was, there was one time I logged on after taking, I, I took just a break for a couple months because I play other games. Like, I, I don't like even, even like destiny, I take breaks from it from time to time. Cause I play other games. Uh, but like, I, so I went back in and I just jumped into a match in the casual, like I was playing in the casual uh, matchmaking setting. Yeah. And the amount of people screaming at me, the stuff that they were saying, like, like, and the thing is, like, I've been in lobbies where people say some shit like the with how personal everybody got from right off the bat where I'm like, guys, they patched. They patched my favorite character to play differently. They got rid of my favorite map. <laughs> like they added stuff. They reworked maps. Like Siege changes a lot from update to update. Yeah, too. and I don't play like, it for a living. Like yeah, I have um, a job, job. And like that's a game where you have to know positions to be able to like hit people through walls <laughs> and stuff. Like like that game is complex in a way that a lot of other competitive FPSs aren't. Um. And it was just one night where I was I played a few matches and I'm I, I I logged off, deleted the game, and I've never played it since then. Like it was it was brutal. And that was a game that I was talking terrible. about Siege? Yeah, yeah, I'm talking about Siege. <laughs> <laughs> um and like that was a game that I liked, and I wasn't even that terrible at it. But like there everybody just decided they were coming for me that night. And it's like I just didn't wanna deal with that ever again and i haven't played the game in years because of it yeah i feel like i feel like you know again this is the first time i've seen something quite like this but in a, in a sort of like slanted way it reminds me of when apex legends came out and had the like their ping system for communication right. and they yep. had this like really really smart um integrated way to do communication in a surprisingly detailed way. I still haven't seen it done better than without, they have. without having to deal with voice chat. Right. And like allowing people to opt out of voice chat and still be fully communicative. Um, and like, 
the Apex Legends was one of the rare times where I actually tried out uh, and, I, and I played a decent amount of it for a little bit because it allowed me to completely avoid um, that feeling of dealing with just shitty, shitty people. You right. know, um, <laughs> I'm just I'm a grown up and I don't have time for this. So, um, Britt, I don't know how much you could hear while you were off getting your coffee stuff prepared, but I was saying earlier, like the toxicity in online games, the kind of stuff that options like this are meant to address like that's a major part of why i don't play online games oh and, absolutely and like that comes despite me being somebody who by all accounts should not face that much harassment online right i have a stereotypically mm -hmm. very white sounding and masculine voice um you know so like right. i'm just not gonna catch the same strays that somebody like you catches you know, I had a friend that actually like went so far as to like pitch down their voice when they were playing games online, just really? so that like pe th they were self conscious oh. about it. Like they didn't need need to, but they were self conscious about it. But like they just did not want people to like potentially even hear their voice, but they wanted to be able to communicate in games and like stuff like that's just such a bummer. Yeah, um, like it, it, it really is like. I've said this for since my Xbox 360 days is I don't go into lobbies much like I don't walk around at night in the streets alone. Like I have to take somebody with me. Otherwise I just like, I, I can't you. do it. Um, because it, and you know, what's frustrating about it is these fucking men cannot think of anything to say other than Go back to the kitchen. That's still all they say is go they back still, to the kitchen. Like, if you're gonna if you're gonna drag on me, at least be like smart about it. Just be, be quirky. creative, right? <laughs> Fucking um, yeah. So it's just um, it's it's nice to see a company take steps to reduce toxicity in gaming because i feel like the way online gaming is is just way too it's 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 been a long time coming uh this should have happened sooner um and it, and it's funny because the more it happens the more like who are the people that get mad about it yeah, the, the same men. dudes who want to fucking harass you. Right. 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 Um, and it's like they have no good reason other than, oh, that's stupid. And, it, you know, if, if they can't take a uh, joke, then they shouldn't be playing. And it's like, or you could just not be an asshole. And like, the other side of that is like, I've seen those same people complaining that they're like, oh, everybody just mutes everybody now when playing games online or, oh, they're in party chat just talking to their friends. Like, yeah, like like they're actually like annoyed that people aren't like communicating with random people online in games anymore. And it's like, yeah, because of people like you right. being annoying. Yeah. <laughs> the lack of self-awareness is incredible. Um, especially with everything uh, that's going on in the gaming industry right now. Um, just the, the the entire lack of their own self-awareness and the being mature enough to own your own behavior and maybe be like, mm, maybe that's not the best. Maybe that's why people are doing this. It's just, it's, it's very frustrating. You know, yeah. I feel like we're just like, it's too much immaturity yeah from grown-ass men you like it's also sorry go ahead Derek. okay i was gonna say you know what's also depressing is like you know i've seen more than enough clips right of people sharing their experiences on twitter or or tiktok or youtube whatever um uh, particularly of women right sharing their experiences with with dealing with harassment in group chat um when playing these video games and all i can think of is how almost never do I get to see a clip like that or hear something where another dude in the lobby went, yo, shut the fuck up, dude. Don't be a fucking loser. You yeah. Know what I mean, right. like, exactly. Like, what's fucking wrong with you, dude? Like, no, it's, it's one or two of these dudes will crack jokes and everyone else will just sit there. Uh, like, and at best they are awkwardly silently disapproving, but doing fucking nothing. Right. Being right. cowardly about it. Being complicit is part of the problem. Yeah. 
Yeah, if one dude spoke up and was like, dude, shut the fuck up. Like, this is why you're a fucking incel. You know what I mean? That's all it would take right. to shut Mike, these you know, dudes well, up. It's, it's I mean, funny. there was... I, oh, sorry. Go ahead, go ahead John. No, no, go ahead. Well, I just on, on that note, like, just one person coming back. Uh, there was one guy that... I, this was just recently. This was just a couple months ago. I was playing Halo Infinite online. And this one guy just started, like, calling out individual people on our team in chat. And then one guy got on the mic and just started coming back at him and was like pulling out. He's like, but I'm looking at the scoreboard right now. And you're, you're not putting anything up. And like this guy just kept going into him. And then like later on in the match, he's like, hey, hey, bud, you, you've been real quiet lately. Uh, did you have anything to say? It's just just one guy coming back at him and throwing the exact same stuff right at him. Shut him up entirely. We specifically oh, yeah, need and- more counter bullies in voice chat. <laughs> Yeah. So it, 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 you know what? It, it kind of harkens back to something that my friend Eric was saying just on Twitter today is that, you know, men who see a woman getting abused and say or do nothing are just as bad as the abuser. Yeah, they're complicit. Yeah. And she's right. She's 100 percent right. You know, like so like, guys, if you see something or you hear something, do something. You, you know what's also sad is how often, again, like, it's been forever since I even bothered stepping foot in voice chat, so I'm going off the clips I often see, how often it's, like, very clearly, like, a 12-year-old, right? Or, like, a couple of 12-year-olds who are doing all of this stupid, get in the kitchen and make me a sandwich, <laughs> and, like, there's not one 20-something-year-old dude who's, like... Shut the fuck up, you stupid ass kids. Like, because there's nothing more devastating to a 12 year old who thinks they're cool than hearing a grown up be like, This is why you will never get a girlfriend, dipshit. Like, <laughs> immediate confirm, devastation. However, this is why you have no friends. Yeah. I will confirm, however, that my son will speak up about that shit. Yeah. Which is why he's, he's a good awesome. kid. You need more. You need more. Yeah. I mean, like you've told that. stories of, of him yeah. doing that. Yeah. You know, there, there was one time when, um, just a random person dro- joined a group of me and my friends, you know, playing something online. Um, and we, 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 you know, played a few matches. And right before she left, the last thing she said was, thanks for not making a big deal about the fact that I'm a girl. And then signed off before any of us could say anything else. And, it, like, it was such a bummer. Because she had a nice Dad. time playing with us. But, like, the fact that she felt the need to That's say heavy, that. That's heavy, dude. That's heavy. Like, like, oh, it just, it just bummed us out. Like, and, and we, I mean, we were glad... She joined us. She we had, we had a good time, but like, it just it's it scary. Just sucked it's hearing, fucking it's scary. It's just sucked hearing that. Like, yeah, it's scary. Um, it's intimidating, and it's just like, it sucks that you have to suffer as a player because you can't communicate with other people because you don't want to be fucking berated, right? Yeah. Um. Yep. And it just it's it, bullshit. It just sucks. It's garbage. It's fucking garbage. Right. Um, to, to kind of bring this back around to like a positive light, like I see an, like an increase of companies trying to do this, but it's still just like, it's, it's not enough. Um, I think we're at a point where I, where some of these companies have finally realized like, Hey, we're losing more players than we're gaining by not cracking down on this. Right. It sucks that it's getting it, that like that is the thing that will make them finally take it seriously. But like, I think some companies are finally starting to actually put things into effect to combat te- toxicity because it's a game. People are playing it for fun. People aren't playing it to get yelled at. Well, hey. right. And, and I think like stuff like this particular feature, right? Disabling the more like direct taunt emotes you know, as an option, right, is right. a great, a great option because I don't, I think that there's absolutely room for playful elbowing, right? Oh, yeah. In these but, sorts but, of games, but like, especially when you're playing with strangers, right? Especially like you don't always know where those boundaries are. And I like the ability for a player to simply say, you know what, like, this is not, if they want to fucking do a dance, that's one thing, but I don't need them you know, throwing up the L sign at me. Like, um, I'm realizing now my camera's backwards that looked like I don't know what an L <laughs> looks like. Uh, but on my screen, it looks good. 
It looks um, good. No, it looked good. It looked fine. Okay, maybe I don't know what an L looks like. But um but yeah, like I, I like that as an option of us understanding like there's levels to it. There's there's stuff that is unacceptable and there's stuff that maybe is only unacceptable to certain people within certain contexts and letting people draw those boundaries themselves. Um, I just really like that. Right. Because it doesn't impact. They can still use the emote. Yeah. They can. Yeah. They still see it. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Just the person who you're doing it to, you cannot. Um, I think another great option would be to um, like Overwatch, for instance, you can turn off. Um, the replay cam to see what happened and you can just go to like your teammates. That's cool. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. um, I wouldn't use that. And I think more games should, yeah, more games should implement shit like that. Also, I think if you're, um, I think if you're like playing these games online and you, and, and you want to taunt somebody, right. And you're trying to be playful about it. I think that the more direct taunts aren't even actually really the best options you have. There will never be, a better example of taunting an online game that I've ever seen than like the two people doing the synchronized, like California girls dance thing and Friday the 13th Funny, funniest thing I've ever funniest seen. Thing I've ever seen. And it's just like two people like synchronizing the dance emote over a knockdown. Um, like, you know, but, but the thing is that also comes across as so funny to me that it's hard to take that as like, again, like the spit emote, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. Right. Yeah. What? You know what? I think we probably milked this topic as far as we can go. Um, what do we got next? Well, we've got next is another Brit special because Brit Brit jokingly was like, "Hey, we've got a real real emergency topic." Dropping the um the the Sonic uh themed restaurant opening up in this where was it? Not to be this is the confused one with I'm... Sonic the actual yeah, restaurant, not, like not Sonic the Hedgehog, the place where they restaurant. used to roller skate out to your uh car with food. Um, but it was like you know what would be really fun as just a good bullshit topic to round out the week is. Did we ban someone in chat? Yeah, don't worry about it. Um, They're gone. They're gone. They're gone. Um, but just the idea of talking about what would be some great, hilarious, like branding um, deals and exercises in gaming. Um, stuff like, first off, all the crazy shit that comes to mind is Sonic, right? Because it's all it does feel like it's always Sonic. Um, mm-hmm. We had we had the Sonic IHOP promotion for a little bit. Um, oh. Yeah. <laughs> Any IHOP promotion is just. Do you guys remember some of the Denny's promotions where they had like the Lord of the Rings themed like? Yeah, Denny's I was about to say, it was very shake. I remember that shit. Denny's is good for exactly two things, and that's for um, eating at high as shit at three in the morning, um, or drunk, and or or drunk as shit at three in the morning, and for gay dudes to just fucking raw dog behind the Denny's. Like <laughs> that's just I don't know. Are you how to saying that me. from experience? No, I am not. Um, but knowing other people's <laughs> experiences. <laughs> I mean, Derek, I mean, look, man, if you're speaking look, look, just tell us. Like, speaking of hot dogs, I'm like, in a yeah, I'm what? in a committed relationship and we have not yet figured out our rules about thirds. So um no. Um, but like it's fun, you know, what's funny though is the the only other thing I can think of off the top of my head is there's been this bit going around for a while of people trying to convince um, Harada, the the producer of the Tekken series, that they need to add a Waffle House stage, <laughs> and like, <laughs> and Harada's been asking for details about like what is Waffle House, and like going, okay, well this is a thing we would need to pay licensing for, so I can't promise it, but like, is Street Fighter or Tekken got a Waffle House stage? That's one of the best brand integrations I've I will ever have seen in my life. The, the thing about that one that would be funny because like there's no way the company actually would be willing to do it but if they did somebody somebody got something through that shouldn't mm-hmm. <laughs> the world would be so good um i also remember as like, an example of something that did happen uh there was like pokemon build-a-bear for a bit right mm-hmm. yes yeah, yeah. It, that was that was actually at build-a-bear right oh, yeah great great cross-branding thing i think um, but yeah, so, like just a good time. Like, let's think of some, some funny, silly shit 
this good is, ideas and stupid ideas. I'm open this to is it. The conversation I'm here for. This is this is what I wanted. I've been excited about this. All right, uh, what you got for me then? You're I've so been excited. really thinking, I've been really thinking about this one, Derek. I've been giving it a lot of thought. A lot of thought. Yeah. And yeah. honestly, I couldn't think. Now this could. This doesn't have to be. Like I a couldn't restaurant. think of any. I tried. <laughs> no, no. This doesn't have to be a restaurant, right? No, 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 no. Just, okay. just a, a it, it brand. Could be, it could just, just, just good, kind of like hilarious branded merchandise or brand crossovers. I'll take okay. anything in Monster Hunter. I would yeah. fucking any hate any that game, but love the. Uh, yeah, right, a, a Monster Hunter is, themed like all you can eat Mongolian barbecue would be. Sick. There's only there's there's only one state where this would be legal. Oh, I uh, don't like where this oh, is now, going. Now I'm interested. <laughs> um, obvious, so the state is Nevada, uh, and it's the Leisure Suit Larry brothel. You picked... So here's the thing, John. In true John fashion, you stumbled on what could have been one of the funniest possible things ever. Or one of the greatest ideas a human has ever, and you, you, you crossed it with Leisure Suit Larry, <laughs> a reference that, frankly, about two percent of our audience is going to get. Rom seven oh nine was like themed brothel. Knew it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, if you're gonna have a themed brothel, like I can't think of anything else. Like, there's Leisure Suit Larry. Yeah, because Leisure Suit Larry Hades, still has some dog. grand right? power in 2024. Oh, Hades, Hades, Give dog. Give me a, a Hades, Hades brothel. Oh, Hades themed brothel is. I'm telling you, there's some money there. There is. Yeah. Now you can now you can control Zagreus in more ways than one. <laughs> Is it bad that I'm like very surprised that this is the first thing that went? Because I've just been thinking about different like restaurants and stuff. I, I, I will admit I was mostly thinking, thinking of food, too. but that's oh, because you guys I'm been a fat thinking bitch. about food. I mean, and I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm over I just, here like, where could you fuck? I mean, that is very <laughs> that that is very on brand for me. It's like I wasn't thinking about sex, just think about food, man. Yeah. <laughs> where could you where could you fuck? Uh, no, but but if you're talking about food, I mean, it's got to be. It's got to be fucking Ignis's uh, an Ignis themed restaurant, right? Like, I mean, it's it writes itself, dude. Like, it's so fucking obvious. Maybe like they have those in like Japan, Ignis's, um, especially with what? fourteen in really um, themed cafes. Yeah. No, no, it's, I mean like for for Ignis himself. Oh like, no, 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 no! I just meant like Final Fantasy inspired yeah. food in general. Remember when they sold? This was what Final Fantasy twelve, but they had the potion. Is the actual drink yes. you could buy? So, so fun fact: it's like an one. aloe flavored like soda or something like that. I drank one, and it tastes like fucking. It tastes like somebody's plasma. If it like like if That's I could it imagine, you. like <laughs> if I could it's imagine a fusion John, in a bottle, what what I like like I imagine that that is what like a fucking that was what someone's plasma would taste like. Yeah, like that. It it's it was it was awful. Aww. What's up, young man? Hey, no, come, get back here. He cannot right. hear you, John. There's headphones. That's how they Wait. work. Not everybody does the podcast on speakers. <laughs> get um, back here, boy. You know, he's uh, he's really into like watching streamers on YouTube right now. So the fact that I do this is so interesting to him. Oh, no, stop. <laughs> That's Brit. so no, sweet. No, no. Oh, oh I know. It's, it's, it's the worst. Dad, I want to be a streamer. What's up, guys? Like, My name is... <laughs> Dookie Lover 29, and I'm going to show you the wildest clips you can do hey, on Roblox. Hey, you Chad, are. is this true? <laughs> <laughs> What's up with your boy, Poo Poo Chad 420? <laughs> like, Chad, should my, I do my, my homework Poo -Poo today? Chad. Chad, can you help me with my homework? <laughs> okay. I, I All might right, be out of something here. Um, there's got to be something other than food, though, right? Like, see, look. But food is, a, is an I'm, obvious. It is, but such I'm thinking about the box. I'm like, you motherfucker. One, no, like, yeah, I've been thinking of like game foods. Right, right. Yeah, you can't, you can't limit it to food, Britt. You can't limit it to food. He, he, you gotta here's, think. He, here's a fun one. I, I, I need to workshop this with people. But what, what games do you think would be good for like hi, like hi, friend? The baby. Oh my God, Yakuza themed, um, uh, Yakuza fucking. Themed Cabaret clubs actually would be oh, so right. good. Or what about a Yakuza theme collection agency? That's well, that's buddy, just I, a Yakuza. I got good news for you. 
<laughs> that's just the yakuza. <laughs> you know, that, that is that's that's the thing. It's shaped like itself. Um, Agent Forty Seven Professional Murder. I got. I got. I'm gonna go backwards from this. Okay. Let's right, say let's you it. wanted to do a a, a a a branding exercise with like spirits and like bartending supplies. What would be a good? Who should be branching out into that territory? I mean, there's the easy answer is Valhalla, but 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 well, they bars? would have to... bars. Is well, that what you said? no, well, not bars, but like the Honestly, spirits and the bartending supplies, so, right? So, so, Getting like ooh, simple syrup, that. bitters, yeah. a mixer, you know. Ooh, bayonetta. You know, you know. If, if if but here's the thing they've gin Ronan, has to be the main uh spirit in the set it's got to be gin if it's bayonetta bayonetta feels like a gin girl you know what i mean oh no mm, 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 no you so, so i'm gonna draw no so i'm gonna draw back on my four years of a uh, high class bartending experience here and i'm gonna tell you that right now okay Based on the people that I saw walking to my bar, Bayonetta is absolutely one hundred and ten percent a vodka woman. I can, I can, I can believe that as well. She's yeah. vodka. 100%. It's horrible, but yes. <laughs> one hundred, and I agree, Britt. Vodka sucks shit. It's it's um, the worst. You might as well just drink rubbing used to alcohol. Drink it primarily in my early twenties. It's the fucking worst. Yeah, it's terrible. Vodka's bad. Um. Bayonet, a, a bayonetta theme bar, I think, um, would would uh, yeah, I that, that a bayonetta themed fashion line, right? A like, I mean, fashion dress, lines uh, was something I was thinking of. Like, what, what? Wasn't there what a Final Fantasy like, thirteen like themed fashion line, or was that just a just a? No, no, it was just lightning being a model. Oh, yeah, okay. it was just lightning Whatever. modeling some stuff. But like, honestly, half assing like, it. I, I'm thinking of like, there's some games with some good fashion. And like, people would pay good money to dress, like do some of the like dress up like some of those characters. I'm gonna like, agree with you. Not like, like direct cosplay, but Apparel just like bakery. That's nasty. brilliant. Apparel merchandise is all like it, for games is is already like miserable. I'm really tired of everything that's available for the games that I love being like, here's a T-shirt with the game's logo or some key art of the main character. Like, give me something a little more thought out. You know? I just saw the ultimate collab on my Twitter feed that I'm yeah. going to link link to everybody, oh, I and I think I think that's it. I think that that's it. That's going to be the one I want. Yes, yes. Right, so. <laughs> okay. For, for those of you watching at home, uh, this this is a drawing of Aerith from Final Fantasy VII wearing a shirt of her in front of an Applebee's uh, <laughs> with the final, the original Final Fantasy VII model uh, next to Shadow the Hedgehog, who is we wearing a shirt of him on his motorcycle in front of a KFC. Shadow <laughs> would go for the KFC endorsement, Shadow too. the Hedgehog would absolutely open a fucking uh, vape shop, right? I don't... Hmm, no, bro, it's the Chaotix. The Chaotix have a vape shop. 100%. Shadow yeah. doesn't vape. Oh, yeah, yeah. Shadow fucking drinks like Shadow I mean, just Shadow just fucking pounce fucking steel reserve like so like we all talk about how like like obvious like you would think that Ma like Mario would be an obvious choice for plumber but I disagree I think that's too I think that's too rote I think that's Ma too predictable Mario also does not immediately come to mind as a plumber no. like I know we all know he's a plumber Mario and the pipes and stuff but that's not Mario the, like one of the first associations no no I no have no, with no. Mario. Justin, Justin Justin you gotta think outside the box Mario Tip is there. Mario sells insurance that's absolutely what oh. You're not a coward. Like, like that's we did not claim. Like that. Well, okay, that is, John, 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 John. I need you to explain where this association yeah, came but from. This is just I you. Think, I think this is just you, and I don't know how you got there. Well, so I'm married to somebody who works for a insurance company. One. Okay. Okay, but again, that doesn't, are you that, saying that, your that, wife is like Mario? Mario? Is, 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 is your Mario? wife Mario? I'm trying, Justin, I'm trying to explain to you how I got there, so let me explain okay. it. One, I'm married to somebody who works for an insurance company. Two, I really love Italian food, and I had some tonight. And three, 
Uh, we're having pipe problems at our house right now, which made me think of plumbing, but I don't want Mario to do my plumbing. So I put the Italian thing and the uh, and the insurance thing together, and bam, bam, there it is. Mario is selling fucking insurance. Okay, cool. I won't try um, to make fucking sense of it, dude. Just go with it. I'm really I feel glad like he you would have that his us. own um, stunt double company, right? Like he he would like. Right. And for Brit. movies and shit. Yeah. Right. We have to recognize Roar and Otto. Resident Evil plus Subway equals Jill sandwiches. Oh, that's yeah. brilliant. Capcom's made their own that own that joke on in their own games a bunch of times at this point. Also, I brought up the idea of like <laughs> drinkware and spirits themed after a game and somehow didn't go Baldur's Gate 3. Um oh, yeah. that Ooh. actually feels yeah. too perfect. Uh and here we are. And it would be it wouldn't be good drinks. It would just no. be like trash you it's pick just up. Rebranded like, Kirkland signature and fucking ale, like just I mean, stuff that you eat to. All right, obviously All right. we obviously right. Baldur's Gate brand deliver- cheese wheels. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Skyrim brand. Those would be Skyrim brand. <laughs> Kojima has to have a delivery service, right? Uh, I suppose. Yeah. Who? Kojima. Kojima. Hideo Kojima. Stranding. Um, got to be delivery. Got to be like a FedEx. It's, it's got to be my... delivery, and it's got to be a woman that's wearing uh, scantily clothing, and he's gonna have a specific reason as to why the delivery. Yeah, she can't wear like more that. clothes because it'll it'll weigh her down. It'll and weigh then her she'll down. Run yeah. too slow. Right. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Some shit like that. Yep. Um. Yeah, dog. Uh, what about? Okay. Also, here's a twist to the Kachima delivery service thing too. At what they're delivering is like it's like those things that they used to have, where it was like the movie subscription club, and they would like bring you a movie every now and then. But it would just be like some random shit that Kojima's like, "Hey, watch this." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like it's uh, and it, like no, somebody sorry, no, hand not... delivers a like a burned DVD of Hideo Kojima. <laughs> info dumping about whatever thing he read about <laughs> most recently oh. and that oh, happens wow. to you Chad once is, a month <laughs> Chad is fucking knocking this out of the park kirby and roomba is a good one yo yeah That's yeah kirby, kirby, there is in good. fact a vacuum company called kirby i believe um yeah there is but it would have to be like the kirby that like swallows the car, but on top of the Roomba, but like oh, that's the yes. one like he's exactly. just hanging on. Mouthful mode, exactly. Yeah, yeah, mouthful. Yeah, that that is actually the name of the sir of the vacuum of the cleaning service. Mouthful mode, and it's just Kirby swallowing a fucking Roomba and buzzing around your floor. No, I want Kirby putt putt golf. Yeah, but like here's, Yo. here's the thing. Here's the thing. If Kirby's cleaning your bathroom, he's like going to be eating a bunch of short and curlies and shit. And like that's like that, I'm that's choosing to go back to Brit's brilliant idea of Kirby putt putt. He's, he's too pure for that. Kirby putt putt is so good. Um, wait, how yeah. is that? Hold on, man. John is making everything sexual in this collab idea. You how can't say that right after chat says movies. Pokemon Bad Dragon collab. And like, how when you score, it, it makes a little Kirby sound and the, like throws your ball back up oh, so you can so take good. it. Oh, that's so good. Yeah, I have a weird... honestly an actual like Mario golf course like mini golf thing would fucking rule. Yeah, imagine, yeah. imagine fucking like a like an activity space, um, but it's fucking Mario Party, just a bunch of fucking mini mini games that you do with your friends. I, honestly, the more I think about this, is like, there's a lot of like potential for like amusement parks beyond like even just the like the the few like Nintendo things that we have now. They are like, not. Just a lot- they are not utilizing the possibility space as heavy yeah. as they could. I have, Mario, a, I have a, a good daycare. I have a question. Why has there not been more Pokemon themed like pet supplies? Because that, oh, that's a good one. Yeah, like you do wonder why there's not Pokemon themed like dog bowls and collars and harnesses and leashes and shit like that. Like, Which is wild because I bought my dog when I first got her yeah. a Princess Leia collar. And like stuff for like inside pet aquariums for smaller pets, and like it just does feel it does feel like an obvious pick, um, given you know. What about like the what about the the Dark Souls gym? 
I would you, you walk in and just immediately get thrown <laughs> off a ledge. The, the, biggest, <laughs> dude, the biggest dude in the gym is waiting, and like exactly inside the door, but just hidden from your field of view. So you walk in and he just clocks you from off screen. <laughs> yes, Rob. No, 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 no. The perfect thing would be you walk in, you see a note on the ground that says. Oh, take a left and you'll get to where you need to go, and then you just fucking fall off the cliff. <laughs> <laughs> the name of the gym is You Die. You walk up to <laughs> you walk up to read a sign, and the sign says "Try finger, but hole." And you're like, "All right, well, that's not helpful. Thank you." Like, you're trying to do a bench press. <laughs> you're sitting there doing. You're sitting there benching, and some big dude just walks up and starts pushing the bar down towards your chest. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, he's just adding treadmill to putting, to push you off. A dude walks up and just starts hitting the up button on the speed <laughs> on the treadmill. <laughs> you're on the Derek, Derek, you're with on the direct eye contact. <laughs> you're on the treadmill and a motherfucker comes out of a doorway just firing arrows directly at you. <laughs> you have to like walk oh, through a fog floor to get into like the sauna. This just turned into like yeah. those fucking uh, what are those those ninja shows? Yeah, American oh. Ninja Warrior, yeah. something like that. Seriously. <laughs> Or it's spinoff I'm, Ninja I'm, Warrior. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. There are so many games that I would love to play, like an obstacle, co- like run yeah. through an obstacle course based off. <laughs> I'm oh, sorry. Man. I just want a Dark Souls gym now. Like you're doing crunches. And you go in. You there's up, a, there's every a, time you go up, a guy just kicks you in the face. Yeah. They they have rolling classes. Employees <laughs> will go rolling. in and add weight to what you're lifting, like <laughs> while you're doing it. <laughs> Oh. You're getting Giles Corey. Yeah, yeah, the big <laughs> Giles Corey. Shut the fuck up, you Justin. Can only drink <laughs> six. For every time you go in the gym, you only get six sips of water. There's that's six it. Six sips. There's a, there's, yeah. a, there's a dude there built like Terry Crews, and he's got a shirt that just says "Amazing Chest Ahead." Like. <laughs> There's a guy that walks around with a pot on his head or whatever the fuck that yeah. was in Elden Ring. He walks around with a pot in his underwear. And yeah. He, he, There's he that guy. Him. He comes yeah. and helps you. Yeah. No, that's the guy who spots you properly. <laughs> yeah. like, like, but like, then you like, catch him on the like, treadmill later and he's like running 30 miles an hour. In, and you're like, what of, the fuck? Oh, Derek, instead of let me solo her, it's let me spot her. And he just runs over and like helps people with their workouts. He's like, "Come on, you can do it. You can do it." Oh. He's just he's, he's lifting you up that last little inch. Like that. That's his. That's that. Let him. Let me spot her. That's his job. Oh, that's his job. The Dark Souls gym like Dark was Souls a, gym. was an idea that I was not on board with, it, like on pitch. But as soon as we came up with examples, I'm so in. <laughs> I would absolutely fucking work out. The I, I, you died. Yeah. Yeah, I would absolutely. Ron, I, you would be the person that they have next to the door. Yeah, that, you'd be oh, the one. Whole box, everybody, when they come <laughs> in. <laughs> the sauna, there's just a bonfire you can go sit next to. Yeah. Oh my god. The the fucking um, sh- like you go to the shower room and it's like just so fog fucking wall, steamed yeah. up and so it's like a fog yeah. wall and you walk in yeah. and John's just in there in only a towel wielding two <laughs> other towels like. <laughs> <laughs> ready to whip the shit out of you i feel like another oh, obvious that, one that really heavy a. Orchestral on. music kicks in derek as soon as you walk in i, I need <laughs> oh, I, yeah i need to hear what brit's got loaded up in the chamber oh it's not funny um i just think a casino that is actually gold saucer themed would be really cool oh my god but yeah. i want the fucking slides and shit i, I I want to stay at that haunted house. Yes. Like hotel so bad. It's, it's stupid, but I love it. Yeah. Uh, and also, I, 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 I don't, I, I don't want the little stair, like the little walking escalator. I want the fucking slides. I want to fucking slide yeah. everywhere. God. Hmm. So, so far, I think our two best are, uh, gold saucer casino and dark souls gym. Like, like those are the two I think so far that we've that we've managed to. But, but you you also have to consider the Street Fighter Dojo, Derek. Yeah, or even better, the mortal the Mortal Kombat Dojo, where you might actually fucking die during a class. This is this is gonna sound fucking silly. Poison spit on you or something. Mortal Kombat would probably make a great like sauce line. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, oh, like hot sauce. God. This is not all hot to... sauces, but I like. I do think <laughs> several of them will be hot sauces. That feels correct. But... I like my the ex. Don't ask what goes into the extra yeah. chunky sauce. 
They've got like a good, like, a, you know what? Surprisingly good, like reptile themed garlic honey mustard. You know what oh, I mean? Really, or, or like a reptile themed, uh, a reptile themed, like a uh, tomatillo salsa, like a green salsa. Uh, actually, a tomatillo like, salsa sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. It's not yeah. bad. Actually. I'm just saying go with sauce. Look, if Godzilla can have a surprisingly good brand of coffees, Mortal Kombat can have a good line of dipping sauces. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Alan Wake copywriting services is a good one. Yeah, actually, so actually, it's, it's funny it I bring up a coffee stain and a lot of and a yeah. lot of like <laughs> scratches. First person narration. <laughs> it is funny to bring up uh, coffee because yeah, Dorian asks who's doing the overpriced coffee subscription service, and like the obvious answer is Alan Wake. But actually, I think it would be much funnier if it was Deadly Premonition. Ooh. That would be funnier. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, it's probably just Sam Lake himself. Yeah, it's like, just, <laughs> various like Sam Lake Payne. characters. Yeah. Derek, what if you had like Derek? What if you had this really fancy like? What if you really had this really fancy like? I'm trying to think of what what the business what business would be best for this? Um, something you've like, given like me neither real, side of the business so, so far. So, so John, you didn't have a really you a didn't really have an idea class, before you started talking. <laughs> a really high class like pizza restaurant, right? Like like yeah. wood fire like brick ovens, wood okay. fire pizza and stuff, right? You call it Ember, and it just never fucking opens. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't see. The thing. Pac-Man pizza would be fun. Yeah, Pac-Man pizza would be good. Um. They never like serve you a full pizza. It's always got like a couple slices <laughs> out of it. Today, you know, it look, look, look like it's eating it. It's great. Oh, I am um, served to you by ghosts. I, <laughs> that's probably the most ghost. difficult part. Justin, how are you going to hire the ghosts to serve the pizza? Well, you kill a few people and then you just like <laughs> use dark magic to, in, to, to chain them to. to <laughs> you said that way too comfortably. Yeah, I don't know guys. how I feel about that. <laughs> Brit. <laughs> I'm familiar with death. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I feel like. All right, here's a question for you: funniest possible pick for underwear, like an underwear, underwear? line. Yes, Undertale. No, no, dude, we can't give them that. We can't give that fan no. base that. That's not. John, you don't want to open that John, Pandora's box, John, buddy. You, you don't. You don't know. Ghosts and Goblins. <laughs> Undertale. That's a good Ronato one. Ronato says Ghosts and, Ghost Ghost and Goblins, and that is Ghost good. Is a good um, <laughs> I, I like the... So uh, Dorian said Silent Hill interior decorators. I like the idea of Silent Hill underwear that's just all fucking blood-stained yeah, and splotchy and has rusty, bloody <laughs> fucking... <laughs> Yeah. What you need, what you need, is an underwear line owned and operated by Zhang Yif, and it's called Zhang Briefs. The pun's not good, but Street the Fighter themed underwear great. probably rules. And yes, the Zhang Yif ones are obviously like tidy reddies. No, um, instead of briefs, they're called geefs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Our new good, boxer geefs. <laughs> Okay. Jesus shoes Christ. who would have a shoe line the best shoe line oh it would be fucking um shit this is a hard one because like i just wear hey dudes and sneakers i don't know shit if, about if shoes. you would if somebody sold uh so once again actually a street fighter themed shoe line would be fucking sick um and i, I say that because your- street fighter is always at its best when it's leading into like urban and hip-hop like cultures so like a shoe line would be like a genuinely like high-end like sneaker line would sell so fucking well to the sneaker heads people in chat are saying bayonetta i feel like that's a cop-out that's too easy like like yeah but you do want to sell heels that are also guns like that's that's just a good plan right just a good it's only workable in america but i would love like specifically Final Fantasy character-themed shoes, um, like heels. I yeah. think that would be really cool. I just, like, again, let I, me step on you with my RNA <laughs> heels. Anytime. They, they should do, 
They should like have like a collaboration with Men's Warehouse for Elite Beat Agents, where like you get one of the suits, but you have oh to like go, you have to go in and do a whole dance routine <laughs> before, the, before they'll get you your suit. And depending on how well you do the dance routine, decides on how good the suit turns Here's out. Can we talk this... about how good that game series was? So I, this good. does so sound like good. my actual nightmare, having to dance in order to get a a, a, a good, but. It would be worth it if it meant we got another Elite Beat Agents because holy shit. Um, I miss that shit. Also, calling it out, best version of Jumpin' Jack Flash, a thousand times better than the original oh, version of Jumpin' 100%. Jack Flash. It I turns, heard it way too much, but it, I, 100%. it turns out that Jumpin' Jack Flash always needed to be sped up by like 20% and given just a little more pep. Um, Can you imagine what Nomura would do with like a belt store? Just give Nomura a fucking belt shop. Yeah, he'd, Let he'd, him he'd buy all his own belts. Like, is what he'd do. Like Kingdom belts. Yeah, like that. That that shit would be that. Or Kingdom Hearts shoes is another good one that I saw in chat. Like all, all the shoes are just three times the size of like of, the of, goofy of, style shoes. Yeah, <laughs> like, and they're not the, actually the, shoes; they're just the, slippers. The gigantic <laughs> Sora <laughs> clown <laughs> shoes. Yeah, big ass clown shoes. That would be a really good one. I I mean I get like the real answer like. Uh, aside from all of the like really creative stuff we're coming up with is again like gaming apparel sucks dude like there's mm -hmm. not enough of here is a great like blouse or button down like short sleeve that has like a clever pattern that references the game or you anything like are, are not given the yeti enough credit they okay the yeti does pretty good with like graphic tees right unique logo does really good too sometimes like I think the 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 classic like N7 like hoodie and jacket was a great example of like here's a good piece of gaming apparel like in this case Mass Effect that is yeah, not you know how many people apparel? I know that I don't have know that, how that jacket that. but like it's apparel? because it's yeah. good it's apparel fine yeah. whatever um, apparel? um I <laughs> I don't know how that word's pronounced it doesn't come up very often I, in spoken language I got language. one of those for a while and I actually mostly got compliments from people that had no idea what Mass Effect was. Because the thing is, it's just a good looking jacket in its own yeah. right. And it matches the theme of the game. Yeah. Like it's just it's, like it's just a cool jacket. Yeah. Eric, I'm gonna give you shit about apparel. For Good. The it's the one time you'll ever be able to give me shit about something language related. <laughs> Eric, what's so your enjoy it. To wear? I'm gonna fucking end you, John. <laughs> um <laughs> A great example, Pokemon had a great set of shorts, yeah, like that, graphic that shorts and line... button downs um, that were all these great, like, it was just, it was like really clever patterns. And they had like, they had 151, right? They had one for every Gen 1 Pokemon. And like, I'm not even a big Pokemon fan. And I thought those look, lo they those look, look great. so good. Um, and that's what I want is I want. I want something that's not, hey, we put a gaming logo or piece of key art on a T-shirt for you, but something that's not like, hey, this TikTok fashion influencer put a fit together based on a character that would cost thousands of dollars and is not something I would wear out in public at all, right? Like, like kudos, to them, kudos to them. because Kudos to them, but also 99% of us would look like fucking dweebs dressed like that. So <laughs> how about you Eric, just give you me one of these, right? One of these, yeah. but with like a nice little subtle pattern to it. Derek, have you seen the Destiny Raid jackets? No, should I Google this? Okay. So the, really those sweet. are really cool. Like, it, if you, there's specifically a reward for people that finish. Oh, that's the raid cool. Within yeah, a, within a certain amount of time of uh of launch. So not everybody can buy them. They're expensive. But like the last one, like the lining was like patterned, like part, oh, like some of the rooms and yeah. stuff in the raid. Like they're just nice jackets that look really cool. Um. They're very expensive though, so I do not have any of them, but they're they're super neat. I think the hard part too is like I'm trying to move away from wearing t-shirts as much as possible. Um like I have a few, but I'm trying to turn t-shirts into my like I'm wearing them around the house shirts rather than my I'm going out in public shirts. Um and I how want you are. Huh? Look how fancy you are. Yeah, bitch, I'm fucking beautiful. Enjoy it. Um but like it's hard because all the good geeky nerdy shit is just like graphic tees. And I want, I want more of this. I want more good fun, like jackets and cardigans. 
Well, and also, like, I, I, I think there is, like, there's been more and more high-end stuff, but it's, like, so ridiculously priced yeah, that nobody where's can afford the it. It's not accessible. Accessible yeah. video game clothing. That's like, not accessible, basic... like, classier-looking I need something clothes. between fucking uh, the, the GameStop t-shirts and the fucking, uh, like, the, the shit that, that they only make 500 of. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. You have to pre-order it within the first five seconds. Yeah. Otherwise you don't... Or so you I think I think I have the ultimate one to end on. Yeah. Okay. Let's just let's just replace everything Harry Potter, Pottermore, all Correct. the fucking houses with Avatar the Last Airbender elements instead. Yeah, I'm I'm there. I mean that's not gaming, but I agree wholeheartedly. Is the anime yeah. with the with the bald kid with the arrow on his head? It's not strictly anime. It is a Western animation, but I'm being a nerd, so yes. You're, you're That's right. a whole what Derek, on Derek, give him credit. He did get that one right. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah. mostly. I mean, there's a whole debate about that. But, it's hard not but, to know what The Last Airbender is, so you know. I mean, I know the, the, I thought the movie was pretty good, but why does he have an arrow on his he's head again? He's doing that. He's doing this just to mess with us. I'm not I'm not doing this. I mean I I mean Derek, you've heard my truth about that. Did you I'm like the movie, seen, Justin? I block it I, out. I have, I have not seen the animated series. The of only Avatar, thing the he's seen Airbender. is the movie. Only, the movie. and I've I seen, I've seen it multiple times. It's, it's, mm, I, I'll be one of the shows. Though, I say the movie wasn't bad. I saw the first fifteen minutes of it and I fell asleep. It's, it's hard. Real bad. It's well, hard, John, bad. because your 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 boy is too old uh, for me to recommend you a lot of great foundational family media that you should be watching with a kid, like Steven Universe or like Avatar: The Last Airbender. Oh universe is see like uh, that again like your boy's too old for you all to go through that together um your boy is your boy's too old for y'all to be, go through like a bluey phase you know what i mean so I mean, like, my son and i watched like you know the terminator and right and, and, no that's the problem we have a when you have a by the time a, a, a son is 11 years old you're watching r-rated movies together i do you know, know like, how you, male bonding my works like my son was 14 I, I was he was like what are we watching dad i'm like well we're gonna watch the usual suspects tonight yeah, Tomorrow exactly night, let's, watch, <laughs> let's watch seven i get it that's how men bond with their male children is they go hey you're 12 now let's watch tarantino <laughs> like <laughs> it's fucked wrong. it's not helpful but that's how y'all do it um but and yet my son remains a glorious pure himbo Oh, that boy is so fucking stupid. I love him to death. Now, he's um, brilliant as shit. Don't get me wrong, but he's also yeah, he's also he's real like, dumb. Yeah. <laughs> he's both he's of those things. He's it's a incredible. mini John. It's like you, like you are very smart in your ways, but man, do you do you show up sometimes? <laughs> did you know that my did you know that I have a genius level IQ? Uh and also, uh well, no, I can't say that part out loud. So no, say it, Derek. No, because it's something that you revealed in in. I don't. I don't want to talk. We'll talk about it afterwards. Um, but no, Just say it. You you've it talked before about having an actual learning disability. Like, oh no, I do have a learning disability. Oh, for yeah. sure. Yeah, absolutely. I didn't, I didn't want to just be like. Also, you have a learning disability. Like, <laughs> but like, <laughs> it's a great example of like people contain multitudes, right? Yeah. Like. Yeah. You know, That's not a no, no, I'll, t I'll tell the whole world. I can't do numbers. We're all like, it turns I, I, out all of us are very, well, not all of us, but many of us are very smart in some ways and really struggling in other ways. Right. I John and I are very similar. We're both deaf and deaf and we both have, um, yeah. Learning problems. That's I, okay. I'm, I'm one of the three in a generation math gaze. So yeah. I'll, I, I make are, up for Brittany it. And I are both like half deaf, like legit. It's like, like me and John Lovett and one other dude in like China. And that's the three math gays in the world, I think. So like I do a lot of like uh, purchase order requisition requisitions and a lot of shit for work that involves math and adding and everything. And it's like I'll call Zach and be like, I have to do this and like I have to divide it by this much to for each month like. How, like how do i do this like somebody just needs to talk me through it because my brain is just like fucking simpsons please stand by music when it comes to math like i know how to do it but the process of getting there is like i don't know what i'm doing Derek yeah. dorian gamer in chat said you got the tism that's so here's <laughs> the thing that's true but the thing is i know an awful lot of autistic people 
who did not get the fucking Rain Man tism, right? Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. oh yeah. And I happen to get the absurdly good at math version, um, but you know, <laughs> I can't introduce myself to anybody I don't know, so that's a trade off, I guess. Meanwhile, good I'm thing like, I can do my own taxes. Meanwhile, I'm like, I'm like, two plus two is five, motherfucker. What about that? <laughs> Itch. Oh. All right. Well, we've hit our fucking limit here. We're at 1030. We're a little past 10. What a we'll silly like show. I'm so glad we had this one. So unfortunately, one. next In week. In the words of CJ, we silly. needed this. We did. <laughs> um, When's CJ gonna more... come back on the show? God damn it. I will uh, he's I... too into sports right now. Yeah. We're nothing to him. <laughs> we only get ahead. him it, when it's not basketball or football season. I will I or will baseball. go ahead and warn I will go ahead and warn the chat. Next week's show is going to be heavy. Yeah, um, yeah. The plan is to guest, have Alyssa Mercante. Our guest is going to be our guest is going to be Alyssa Mercante. Uh, I actually need to double um, check. Do you do you say the A or is it like an a, a, a silent? I it might know. be Mercant. Um, we'll I, I can't remember it. Yeah. Um, but Alyssa is going to be on, and I'll tell you right now, we're going to go straight into the Gamergate two stuff. Yeah, we're going to talk um, a lot about harassment and and uh, shit people don't understand about you know uh cri- you know criticism and progressive criticism and shit like that um you know i think there will be a lot of catharsis to it right as we get to just like vent and make fun of like a lot of shit that really upsets us and frustrates us but uh i mean it's going to be subject matter that i understand a lot of people may want to shy away from and uh, yeah, i got so, no, we get enough of this shit yeah so like you know if, you know if if that's something you want to tap out on no big deal um totally understand uh I, and in fact in fact i think it, it will probably start that show off with a content warning um uh because there's there's quite a bit to unpack and it's going to be uh it's going to we're, we're going to laugh at we're going to we're going to have fun at other people's expenses but it's going to be like a like an angry kind of laugh you just don't usually so, go that heavily into like stuff that is that soul crushing um right for a whole so, episode but you know but it is but so yeah but but it's important to talk about people need to be talking about it so we're going to get into that next week with Alyssa. we're very much looking forward to having her on uh uh, for anybody new in chat if you are not a member of the discord you can see the uh the link right there in chat jump in there we got 300 430 something odd people in there now at 500 i'm going to cosplay as lady dimitrescu so if you guys want to see that happen um get us to 500 people uh or don't or don't do that. Like I, I regret ever making this 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 no, agreement. No, you don't. No, you uh, don't. No, I absolutely do. Um, but uh, uh <laughs> thank you, Samantha. Uh, at any rate, um, Derek, uh, let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and log us off. What is it? why there? What what the hell is that? Uh, oh uh, God! Uh, like what? <laughs> why? <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> That's actually funny. That's <laughs> stupid. That's fucking stupid. Oh All right, guys. God. Goodbye. Yeah. Jesus.